morning, everybody. So this is my son, John, and I'm Jim, and we are Cactus Country. And what we're going to be doing for you garden lovers this morning is a little tour through the garden with the different trails, and we'll show you the feature plants and talk about a few things. But Claire, our behind the camera person, is going to be shooting cacti and that to give you a great idea of what Cactus Country is all about. So we'll be starting our tour from here. Hi everybody. Well, this is, um, as I said, this is the Green Trail. So the first of our trails, and it's mainly in the Green Trail about monstrous plants. So for those of you who don't know, a monstrous plant is a plant that grows just normal. So the plants in the background here on where I'm pointing, you can see they've got straight ribs and that's normal growth for a cereus. So this is a cereus like that one, but it grows without any complete form. So it just keeps moving around and making different shapes and bulging out wherever and still continuing to make that shape. So over here, we've got the, a, another form of uh, monstrosity. So this is a cereus. And as we talked about at the start, just a few moments ago, and this one is spiraling. So you can see here the form that just goes round and round and they grow. And these will grow up to the size of um, top of a house, so to speak. So really big, and you'll have all just this really large spiral form on the plant. And they look, um, on the internet, I've seen one where it was the size of it out in the front yard, but the size of the house, the plant was so large. So yes, this is one of the things that's very in vogue at the moment and very sought after. This is an Apuntia, and um, it's known as the teddy bear Apuntia, but this is a cristate form, or mainly cristate form. There'll be some normal forms. So here we can see all these new shoots that are coming on it and you can see how they're waving and some of them aren't waving, they're doing other things. And then we've got flower buds coming. So occasionally um, over here, you can see a actual flower bud that's cristated. And that happens more and more as you get a more pure cristate plant. So these are plants that we take our cuttings off uh, for doing for sale and we're working on getting more, uh, more pure forms of this. This plant here is a plant we call red crest. And the reason that we call it red crest is because this is a crest of it. So the normal plant is a Serencia libivia cross. Um, that's quite an old one. And when we had a friend here one day, about two years ago, he spotted this little plant, little um, offshoot that was crested. And so it was grafted and this is the result. So it's one of the bigger grafts that we have of plants that are growing with a head that comes out to that width. You can see down here with the Echinopsis that it doesn't get anywhere near the size of that. So this is the cactus reef part, but what we've been looking at is an extension of that to the outside tough plants being out in the full sun and to be able to show them growing to a much larger size. About five years ago, I had this idea of growing plants and making um, what would be essentially a coral reef out of cacti and other plants. So guys, we've shifted sections now. We're still in under a covered roof, but we've shifted into um, Brazilian cacti on the left-hand side mainly, the blue cacti. Beautiful blue colours because they never really get frost where they grow. And on the other side here, we've got the Atacama Desert. And you'll see the background is alpacas, etc. So we're just going to do a little walk along here and so you can see all the different varieties of blue cacti that we've got growing. These have been here for three years now and we're starting to get some nice size into them. So we're starting to come into the South American and um, got a special little treat, Claire, if we come over this way. 
is the espatoa here is flowering this morning. So it's very rarely that you see this, but because it's overcast today, the flower has stayed out beyond the normal time it does um, flower. So here you can see the espatoa flower. And once again, there's more stiffish petals and the bats come in and you can see how they would get the pollen on their, on their head and then transfer it. And the female part is just out here and it isn't quite open yet, but to, tonight this will close up um, in probably the next hour. And then tonight when it reopens, these will be open for the bats coming back again. So guys, welcome to the Pink Trail. So the Pink Trail is one of our oldest trails and a lot of the plants, there are plants from other sections in here. So this is meant to be a South American trail with our Oreo cereuses, um, Pilo cereuses, Espatoas, all those sorts of plants, Trico cereuses. But over the years, we've taken quite a few out, but there are still some in here. Now up here on the right, We've also got a very old, so it's one of the original plants planted out in uh, 1986 when the garden was first planted. And it's a very large Oreo cereus fossilatus. And you can see how it's fallen over into the bush next door and it's leaning to the right quite substantially. And we've had one big part fall off so far. And I'm sure that in the near future, there'll be more will <laughs> fall off. And then around in this landscape, there are a number of different Oreo cereuses, thin ones, nice thick ones like this. This is probably um, Oreo cereus neo celsianus, and it's one of the thicker ones. Very heavy spines once again, and it's got the hair on because they grow up on the higher parts of the mountains where there's snow. Um, and the light, the air is a bit thinner and when the sun does come out, it's very bright, very intense. So this gives them a little bit of protection from the sun, it creates a bit more shade. And just here, we've got the Argentine toothpick plant. And it's because it has these very big, long, very solid spikes on it that is called the toothpick plant. These are old stems. Inside here, you can see some new stems and you can see that the central spike is very like a toothpick. Up here is this very large plant of an espatoa, and I've been told that this is as big as they grow in the wild. And some of these, so these are the cephalums, and until the plant develops a cephalum, which this one doesn't have, you won't get any flowers. And so once they develop cephalum, they flower out of this, and it keeps growing. And then up in the back up there, if Claire can pick it up, there's a rare thing where you get two cephalums on the one stem. And so you've got one each side. And it's because here it's a little confused because um, it doesn't know whether there's, the light is mainly from that side or this side because of the gum trees behind us. Vera de flora, which means vigorous flower and you can see it's got beautiful little pink flowers. Uh, some, some of these have a white flower um, and a creamy colored flower. This is um, one plant that's been multiplied a few times and spread around and they form, eventually could form clumps around about a meter across. So very big, vigorous and very beautiful when they come out like this. These are known as the, um, uh, what's the word? the stars, I guess, of the uh, flowering kingdom because they last for several days. Okay, guys, this is uh, normally removed and the flowers go up here. And uh, we've had quite a few weddings in this area here now. And this is set aside so that when we're operating on Saturdays and Sundays and Fridays, we haven't got a wedding coming up on a Friday, that uh, we can shut this trail off and people can get married here without interfering with the flow of the customers. And um, and you can see the fruit on this particular plant. This is what we make our Cactus Country jam out of and our ice cream is made also from this. So this is the white trail sign, guys. So we get, we're heading into, as you can see, alpaca land here. We're going down into the valley and we'll see quite a few trico cereus and cereuses.
This, guys, is the Orange Trail, and the Orange Trail, the feature of the Orange Trail is that they're nearly all my hybrid cacti. There's only a few of the big Tusheki eyes that we can see behind here. There's only about three or four plants in there that are original plants from the wild, and all the rest are plants that are hybrids of mine, and these were planted out in 2006. So they're very young, but because they're hybrids, the vigor is very, very good. And so they're growing much faster. So you'll see some quite big plants out here. As this is one of the hybrids that I was talking about, and this is a Serencia cross Tusheki eyes. So we were just looking at the Tusheki eyes, and these are the colored flowers coming from the Serencia side. This is a uh, rare cacti, but it shows that this is a Lutea, or a um, yellow form of a variegate. So with a lutea, it just grows with this yellow aura to it. And then as it gets older, you sort of see a tinge of yellow and light green, I guess, on this particular plant. But it can vary to the plant being virtually yellow and all over. So a variegate usually means that it has patches that are dark green and then you get the yellow Whereas this, we call it a lutea because the whole plant has a bit of a yellow glow to it. And then over the back here, we can see a plant as it normally is. And this is um, an F2 hybrid. And you can see this one's called Jim's Monster because it's so big, so early in life. And it's got a huge trunk. If I stand right in front of it, you can see that you can probably just about see the side of the plant there, which is a little unusual for a plant of this age to be this size. This will be our last little piece that we're going to be doing today. And uh, this is a JT. So the first of the JTs, which is where I changed from doing the um, JPs, which was Jim's Pasacanas. These are Jim's Tusheki eyes, just so that we started with fresh numbering system. And this is what's called a splitter and a stacker. So the splitting, because of these large splits it makes. So this plant is a monstrous plant. And you can see in the top of the head here how it's doing unusual things. And then it tends to terminate and then it shoots new shoots as it does up here he's starting to do so you can see the segments that happen over and over and that's why it's called a stacker because it keeps stacking up on top of itself as it terminates and then reshoots and grows and in this plant's uh, particular case it splits and that's probably what we're going to do now we're going to split and say thank you very much for being part of cactus country's first uh, virtual tour and we've done the whole of the South American side and in the future we will do um, some feature of the other side of the garden. So thank you very much and uh, we hope to see you here at Cactus Country one day to see these big plants growing. Mm -hmm.